It is Friday, March 29th, 2024. This is another edition of Baseball Today, presented to you by our friends over at Factor. That is my man, Trevor Poop. I am Chris Rose, producer Dan, along for the ride as well. For those of you joining us live today, my fault. A little bit of the technology bugaboo. But don't worry, it's not going to rain on my opening day parade because all I did was sit in front of on the couch in front of the TV and watch all 13 games that happened on Thursday. So I'm I'm feeling fine. Yesterday, I, I don't mean to call it your Super Bowl because that's mixing sports, but I, I know how you were feeling yesterday. You were having the best time of your life, and I'm very happy for you, C. Rose. Yes, it was very nice. I hope you got to enjoy some baseball, even though you're on your – Florida vacation with some family. So uh, you watched a little bit. I did. I did. I was happy with some. I was disappointed with some. My guy, Royce Lewis. I'm going to say some prayers at the end of this show for him. Don't care what you say, okay? Don't worry. We'll be talking about him in a bit. Unbelievable. Uh, a few amazing sights, as there always are on opening day. To me, the one that really grabbed me was the fact that Joey Votto, who, of course, signed a minor league deal with his Toronto Blue Jays, was in Tampa yesterday sitting somewhere in the upper-ish deck, uh, watching what he hopes will be his new teammates in action. That's pretty cool. I mean, the guy just loves baseball. How could you not want this guy on your big league roster? Put him on the roster. Let's go. It's time. And then uh, San Diego Padres playing their first home regular season game since the passing of their owner, Peter Seidler. Francisco Tatis, who I know is very close to him, with the Seidler custom cleats. Pretty awesome. Those are amazing. And what a way to pay respect, uh, you know, to a guy that obviously he has, uh, you know, a relationship with and a ton of respect for. So it's awesome. All right. Before we dive into what actually happened on Thursday and what might happen this weekend, I want to tell you a little bit about Factor, which, of course, is presenting sponsor of baseball today. Eating better has never been easier. Thanks to Factor's delicious ready to eat meals. They're always fresh. They're never frozen. They are chef crafted. They are dietitian approved and they're ready to go in just two minutes. You're going to have over 35 different options to choose from each and every week. That includes Calorie Smart and Protein Plus and Keto. And there's also more than 60 add ons to help you stay fueled up throughout the day. So head on over to factormeals.com slash baseball 50. Use that code baseball 50 to get half off. And coming up at the end of the show, it is our factor question of the week, which I'm excited about. It's pretty entertaining. Uh, Speaking of entertaining, the two teams that entertained us in last season's Fall Classic, both off to very interesting winning starts. Uh, The Texas Rangers, they unfurled their first ever world championship banner. Then they were down to their last few outs in the ninth inning. Travis Jankowski hits the game-tying homer. Jonah Heim hits the walk-off in extras, so they get a dub over the Cubs. And then the Arizona Diamondbacks, I think they just scored another or two more runs in the third inning. They put up 14 in a single frame against the Colorado Rockies as they blasted them. So which of those two teams that played in the World Series are you more interested in following their 2024 journey? I think I'm more interested in the D-backs. I love both these teams. They're both obviously very fun to watch. They get the job done differently. But uh, you look at yesterday's game, I believe it was eight different players in their lineup had uh, two or more hits. And uh, they're, they, I think they just have a lot of ways to beat you. You know, we, we kind of been talking about their pitching staff lately, how they've been able to, you know, uh, basically, you know, create a, a brand new staff over the offseason, get some guys like fought going over the last playoffs. So we, we focused on that a lot. But their lineup is also very long and balanced, and they can do a lot of different things. Speed, power, like it's all there. And it was all on display yesterday. So, you know, I think, and me included, I've, I've come on this show and said, hey, they, they won 84 games last year. They barely snuck into playoffs. What would we say if they didn't get into the playoffs? Um, but when you watch this team play, they're just fun. They're, it, it's a fun watch. I feel like it's good baseball. So uh, as much as I like watching the Rangers mash the ball around the ballpark, uh, I think a, the true baseball guy in me likes the way the D-backs play the game. In addition to that, their ownership said they weren't done spending. They weren't like, hey, listen, we made it to the World Series. We've got some good young players. Like, we're good. They went out and they spent heavily. And then here this week, I mean, they're going to sign Jordan Montgomery officially today. So I kind of like the moxie that they've got where there's Dude. where ownership is is financially backing them. They're not always my favorite ownership group, but I think they've done a really, really good job uh, to keep the excitement levels high there. And uh, the unis were incredible yesterday. Love yes. the red helmets. Uh, they looked 
awesome. And Eugenio Suarez with the hair, like he's he's always had the flow, but he's got the flow now. So I'm into it. I'm into all of it. Brady, uh, our youngest son, who's a bit of a uh, uniform designer, he designed our high school uniforms for us. He said the red helmets were awesome, but you can keep the black bill on the cap, but not the multicolored helmet. He wanted to see them all like metallic red, which I, yeah, he okay. and I kind of agreed on that. One quick note with two things with Texas. Big picture here. There's been a lot of Ranger fans who are like, we're not getting our love and our our due respect. Like people always say, well, once you win, then people should be talking about you. And actually, I agree with them for the most part. Here's part of the reason I think that people aren't, I don't know if it's so much the respect, but talking about them as one of the big time stories. Number one, we haven't had a champion successfully defend their crown in a quarter century. It's the longest drought in Major League Baseball history, so we just don't expect it this year. Uh, number two, the Texas Rangers don't have the greatest history, the deepest history in this sport. So sometimes uh, in baseball, you need that, whether it's Yankees, Dodgers, Cardinals, Red Sox, uh, Cubs, all that sort of stuff. I Do I think it's fair? Not necessarily, but I think that that's a fact. Um, number three, your pitching stars are not pitching right now. And so I think that that's probably all part of the reason. Am I off base there, or do you agree? No, I, I think you're right. I, I feel like everyone is thinking, hey, they're not even at full strength yet. Like, let's talk mm -hmm. about them when they get to full strength. You know, I think that's the first thing everyone thinks about is, okay, they mashed the ball, but they got to find their pitching. They got to get these guys healthy or figure something else out. Uh, I know Eovaldi looked pretty dang good yesterday, but I, I agree. I, I guess that's what it is. I, I don't really have an answer, but yeah, we're waiting for them to be at full strength and then we'll be all over them. Because this team's going to match, Chris, and they are really fun to watch just in a different way than the D-backs are. Two other things about last night's game. I really hadn't watched Wyatt Lankford that much in spring training. I just didn't catch a ton of his at-bats. First yes. of all, there's no way that dude's 22. He's like 37. <laughs> the largest forearms of any. His forearms are amazing. I love his forearms. I was like, oh, it holy smokes. Number two, why haven't we changed the rule where you can't review a foul tip at the plate? I have no idea. Chris, I mean, and then even after the game, Fairchild comes out and says, I'm going to stand by my call. What? Yeah. You meant you missed it, bro. You missed it. Just say I missed it. It's hard in real time. Hey, that's a tough call for me. I didn't hear the tip. I couldn't see it. Instead, you say I stand by my call when clearly the ball is we're showing it right now. That was crazy. Yeah. And, you know, I'm happy that Jonah Haim got to uh, redeem himself because honestly, you know, I don't know if we're talking about this later in the show or not, but like you, you just got to keep playing right there, especially if the umpire's not doing what you're saying and he's not saying foul ball or anything. Like you, you got to go get that ball. Mm -hmm. And heads up base running by Bush and the third base coach for sending him. Like you, you just got to get the ball. He even said that after the game. He, he understands that you just got to continue to play, but you missed the call, dude. And by the way, it is one of 162. If this happens in game three of a five game series in October, like, come on. Let's please like, let's fix this. This seems, this seemed like something that they should remember a couple of years ago. Well, it was many years ago now where they changed the transfer rule during the yes. season. So why don't we do that right now before well, they changed, they changed it before the year and made it. So you yep. had to have like two or three steps with the ball. And then exactly. they were like, this is stupid. And like a couple of weeks in, they're like, no, nah, this isn't working. So why don't we do that now with this? This is insane that this, like the things that aren't reviewable make me upset. Like that obviously should be reviewable because it's an easy, it's an easy review. Like you just look and if the ball moves or it touches the bat, it's a foul ball. Do we have an explanation why you can't review things in front of bags? It just doesn't make sense. No idea. I, I, I think they, I think that's the umpires association thing. Like, Hey, we need to be able to make some calls on our own. Yeah. I think it's an ego right. thing. If anybody knows in the chat, feel free to throw it in there. Um, in the, also, by the way, out of that game, we're keeping our eye on Justin Steele. Craig Council says it seems like it's definitely an IL thing with a hamstring. Uh, I want to yeah. say one more thing about Wyatt Langford. Yes. It's like not pretty, but it's so pretty. Do you know what that, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Like, it's not the prettiest it. swing. Yeah. Like, I don't know. There's something about this guy. He is a, he's a rat, bro. A baseball rat. I could tell 
right away watching him play. So I'm in. I'm into it. How about how about his? He's he's already married, and his freaking wife is a uh, an athlete at Mercer, and had to have surgery. And it, I mean, the whole bit is crazy. Um, all right, a couple of big names coming up big time in the American League East debut. Uh, Corbin Burns was fantastic outside of giving up Mike Trout's solo shot in the first. Good call by you, Ploof, on that one. Uh, Burns, 11 strikeouts, no walks. Baltimore blasted the Angels. And then Juan Soto, he shines in the Yankees' win, not only because of his bat, but his arm. There's a base hit to right field. Dubon rounds third. They're waving him home. Here's the throw from Soto. Here's the play. He's out. They got him. A great tag by Trevino. And Soto got rid of it quickly for the second out. Okay, so which newcomer, Soto or Burns, is going to have a bigger impact in the divisional race? It's Juan Soto uh, to me for sure because he plays every single day. Uh, I, Corbin Burns, I saw the first inning. I saw him give the homer, and I was like, okay, here we go. And then like I was off doing something else, checked my phone. I was like, he struck out 11 guys. How many did he walk? Zero. I was, I was like, okay. I love that for Corbin. I love that for the Orioles. Congratulations on an incredible trade. Uh, but Juan Soto, if you take him out of the Yankees lineup, uh, it's just different. It's way different. And I understand you can say the same thing about the rotation in Baltimore, but there's so much talent on that team in Baltimore that, like, do they need Corbin Burns? I, I guess they did uh, after Bradish gets hurt. But, like, to me, if you take Juan Soto out of the Yankees lineup, they are – not even close to the same team. So he's going to do it with the bat. I told Dan before the show, I said, it's probably going to be his best defensive highlight of the year. Not known for the glove or the arm or anything like that, but hey, uh, a great throw. And Trevino going up the line like that, uh, underrated part of that play. Like he's positioned himself perfectly to get that uh, ball and put the tag on as well. If he waited back at near the plate and it would have to reach, to, like it just wouldn't have been the same thing. So he did a great job uh, on that play as well. But I think Soto... To me, not only because he's a position player, but because I think, like I said, that lineup looks so different uh, without him in it. I think he's going to have a bigger impact. And most importantly, if Aaron Judge's health goes on the fritz, they have somebody else that can carry them. When Aaron Judge yeah. wasn't there last year, they were literally the worst offense in baseball. That will not happen as long as Juan Soto plays every day, yeah. which he did a year ago. He played all 162, and he's always pretty much been a healthy body, and he's just incredible. Now, if the question had been, if both teams get to October, Corbin Burns gives the Orioles not only so much physically, but emotionally. Like, when you can run that guy out in game one, I'm telling you, last year they won 100 games, and they were probably scared to death of their situation against the Texas Rangers, right? I mean, they, they're they like, can we really match up with them, right? Do we have the ability to? I know that the Rangers didn't have their main guns going for them, but mm -hmm. still Evaldi and Montgomery are guys that they felt like they could rely on. And with the Orioles, it was still probably a cross your fingers sort of deal. Yeah. I mean, you, no matter who you match up against now in the postseason, you put Corbin Burns out there and you're probably the favorite in that game. Like there's not many people that are going to be better than Corbin Burns. I don't know if I can name one. Like, I guess, I guess Garrett Cole, like, uh, maybe Luis Castillo, like there's obviously those upper echelon pitchers, but Corbin Burns is that guy. He's one of them. Yeah, he absolutely is. Um, certainly when you're talking about the American League, there's there's not a ton of guys with track records that don't have health questions at this point in their career. So, I mean, he's yeah. right in the middle of it. I think he's still 29. And yeah, he's just, he's built, as the kids like to say, he's built a little different. Out there. He's diffy, yeah. All right, so get ready for the season ahead with quality shades that are built to last that can look a lot like this on you. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered with premium polarized shades that won't break the bank either. Now, Shady Rays, it's an independent sunglass company offering a world-class product rated five stars, one, two, three, four, five, by more than 300,000 people. Their shades, they have durable frames. They have crystal clear optics. You look great, by the way making them the perfect choice for all outdoor activities. Plus, here's the thing I love most. If your shades ever go missing or they take an unexpected hit, if you sit on them in the car, like I have about 
five times since I started getting these. Don't sweat it. They have the most insane protection in the history of eyewear. Every pair is backed by lost or broken replacements. And by the way, if you don't love your shades, and I haven't run into a single customer who's like, yeah, those things sucked, you can exchange them for a new pair or return worry-free within 30 days. And exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays has given out their best deal of the season. So head on over to ShadyRays.com. Use the code TODAY. You're going to get 50% off two-plus pair of polarized sunglasses. And that offer applies to the custom Jimmy and Jake collab shades. So go get yours now. You will feel great. You will look sexy. Summer's coming. We continue on. Biggest story out of this group. Vlad smashing one 450 in the Jays' win over Tampa. Royce Lewis going deep in his first at bat and then coming up with a reported quad injury while running the bases and MRI is coming his way. Or the dominance of the Dodgers stars, Shohei, Betts, Freeman, Glass now as they took it to St. Louis on day one. I was going to be biased here and go with Royce uh, because I do think this is a, a big story. Obviously, this guy is so dang good, man. I mean, first at bat, Homer, like he just has that gene in him. But it's it's so it's like so it's like watching Byron Buxton like you want them on the field he just it has not been able to stay on the field I think this is a pretty bad quad injury kind of from what I've heard like it's anyways I'll get off of that I think the biggest uh, story out of all that was watching those Dodgers in Dodger Stadium do their thing um, you know we had the storyline with, with Michaelis and what he said about them I don't really care about that was interested in that I was was interested in watching those three guys hit back to back to back and the damage they were able to do. Mookie is I'm t- my NL MVP pick. Like he's, he's going to win it. Like this guy is unstoppable. My, yes. my guy went deep too. Yeah, he did. You're right. You're right. They're, they're really good, dude. Um, but watching them all together in Dodger stadium uh, was a sight to behold. And then the whole glass now uh, star, I know Goldschmidt pumped him once, but that was only the only damage he allowed all day. He's from the area. He's from Santa Clarita. And I always just think it's cool when guys find their way back to their home team. And uh, there's just something about those Dodger whites at home. Man. He, he looks great. When I saw the visual and I saw daytime opening day and the crowd going wild, it, it, it hit me a little bit there. Those guys, the Dodger, they're, they're, we've talked about it all offseason long. They're a juggernaut. And they showed why uh, with the Stars performing the way they did. Yeah, and I – chatted with glass now last night i was just like hey awesome job it's great to watch you pitch he's like that's good because i felt like shit didn't love my stuff at all i was like yeah but you got a pretty good lineup he's like dude it is incredible it really is incredible (sighs) he said the way that you can pitch knowing that that's your lineup and that that's your defense behind you he said it's just a different mentality um royce lewis i felt terribly about it i got blasted a bit on social media that i jinxed him because he was on the rose yeah i I said that to you too (laughs) yes you did not fair your comments are unfair you can all take them back right now do you know what you said you know what you said you said blame jolly olive so don't be telling me fair or unfair that's true that's true because (laughs) jolly had a, a a great piece on him as well that came out and don't blame him either i was just having some fun with that unfortunately none of that's fun but i will go with answer C, which is Vlad Guerrero Jr. Um, exit velo of 112 off of that goes 450 feet. Now, in 2021, his numbers were incredible, and we thought, oh my god, here comes the rocket ship. And then he's gone down, and that his OPS last year was sub 800. So, we're getting close to extension time for him. You can't pay a guy $220 million whose numbers are progressively going down. It's time for him to pick it up. It's time for this organization to pick it up. They've paid plenty of good players to come in here, whether it's George Springer or Berrios or Gossman. Uh, you know, they got a mini extension done with Bo Vichette. They paid Chris Bassett. Like, this is – everybody put your big point pants on. Let's go to work now. I picked y'all to make the World Series. So, Vlad, it kind of starts with you. That's what I'd say. Yeah, I mean, similar to how we just saw the Dodger stars do their thing. Like, that's what has to happen in Toronto as well. These guys have to go. Uh, and then everything around them becomes easier. Like, you know, go out there, Vlad, mash baseballs the way you can, and then we'll see you in October. I, um, 
it's nice to see him. He leaned back on that one, Chris, and he had a really, really good spring training. He's feeling it, so I'm excited to see what he has to offer this year because he, once you show it at the big league level, I mean, he won dotted it in, I think, 21. Once you show it at the big league level, you know you can do it, and you have a couple of down years like that. It, it can start to wear on you, uh, but if you find that feeling again, uh, there's no reason why he can't be that MVP-type player. Well, he had 48 homers that amazing year where he was MVP runner-up in 2021. He had 22 accelerator. I don't think it's unfair. I think that's just only logical to be, to you know compare him to his father. We did it with all those guys, with Biggio, with Bichette, with Vlad. I mean, it is what it is. I don't think Vlad cares about that. I feel like he's probably honored to be talked about you know, alongside his father. The guy was a hell of a player. So, Yep. Hey, quick reminder. Um, we just talked a little bit about Dodger baseball. Hey, Los Angeles, baseball today is actually coming for you live for the first time ever. The two of us will be at Boomtown Brewery. That's where we had our all-star gala a few years ago when it was out here for the Midsummer Classic. It'll happen on Friday, April 12th, right before the Padres and Dodgers game. Now, here's the deal. VIP tickets, those are already sold out, but there are still plenty of general admission tickets. Go get them now. General admission starts at 5 o'clock. There's also a free Dodger Stadium Express shuttle within walking distance, so you can get to Dodger Stadium plenty of time before first pitch a little after 7 o'clock local time. Tickets can be purchased at shop.johnboymedia.com. We cannot wait to see you there. It's a live edition of the show. It's a Q&A. And if one of your questions is, Trevor, can I take a picture with you? I imagine the answer will be yes. Yeah, I'll take pictures of everybody. Sign some autographs, you know, Ooh. shake hands, kiss babies, whatever you need me to do. No, I'm excited about this, Chris, uh, because not only is it fun to get around and, and, and meet the people who watch our show and, and just talk shop, but we have our best shows when we're together. There's no doubt yes. about it. I would agree with that. There's and a different energy. A saying, a lot of people are saying, well, why are you doing it out there? Well, we both live in Los Angeles, so we're going to use this as a litmus test. We need plenty of people to show up because if that does happen, doesn't mean we can't come see you. You yes. know, we'd love to take this around the country and go to ballparks. I mean, that's a great, great thing for us, and hopefully it'll be a great thing for you. All right. Um, on the graphic, it says another OD story that got you excited. That stands for opening day, people. I don't want you saying anything else, okay? Another okay. opening day story that got you excited. Give it to me. Uh, there was a bunch of them, but I'll go with uh, one that kind of doesn't mean – that much but i know the feeling it's tyler o'neill hammering uh his fifth mm -hmm. straight opening day home run that's i had a day like that i think it was jackie robinson day where we were wearing 42 i believe i hit a few homers on that day my birthday i've done that so they're like there are these days as a baseball player like oh okay i feel i feel good like it's gonna happen today and when you get into that mindset it usually does happen so i know tyler o'neill showed up to the ballpark today or yesterday was like I'm probably going up top. Eighth inning comes around. He hasn't hit one yet. He's like, what's going on? Bam. Right center there. A great start to the year for the Red Sox. So, you know, kind of a, uh, you know, double pleasure there. He gets his fifth opening day homer in a row, and the Red Sox at the victory. Yeah. Didn't I tell you that I thought Tyler O'Neill would have a bit of a bounce back here? Were you on this show, or was it jolly? I think so. No, I remember you saying that. Yeah, I think he's going to have a shot at that. Similar to Vladdy, like this guy had a an amazing year. I believe he had a nine twelve OPS a couple years ago. He's been uh, hasn't done that in a few years. He's got it in him. He just just got to get that feeling back. Got to get the the mechanics right, and this guy could go. Okay, uh, you know what? I'm going to let the pictures and words do the talking for mine. Here you go. Saw that play at third base. Martini to right center. First opening day start for 33-year-old Nick Martini, who has bounced around the show and overseas, went to the Far East to kind of find his career, had eight career home runs in more than 400 plate appearances before yesterday, and he was like, I just, I can't believe what's happening. So that's why I'm down in the Reds cap. I know we've talked a lot about your injuries and some and your suspension in spring training. Let's talk about something good. And a guy who got a shot because of the injuries, Started at DH yesterday, and I think that is awesome to see. It's not exactly Tuffy Rhodes. Go look that one up from the 80s where he had three homers opening day for the Cubs against Doc Gooden and the Mets. 
uh, but it still was pretty special. I'm looking at the numbers right now. This guy loves hitting in Cincinnati. Last year in 79 plate appearances, a 912 OPS. Pair that with what he did yesterday. And then total, he's got a 995 OPS playing for the Reds. So let's go, man. You found your home. Yeah. Um, and I know you, you, I usually don't let you go with multiple answers. There are sometimes I do, but I do need an extra one here. Obviously, I was watching the Guardians. Uh, they were one of the last teams to play opening day last Shane night. Bieber, nice. And you look at the crowd in Oakland, and you're like, what's going on? Well, that's because they were actually having a big old party tailgating in the lot and boycotting the game. And so uh, there's a young man I know. His name's Julian Sanchez. He's a student at USC, and he reached out and he said, hey, if I shoot some video, will you put it on your show? He's a lifelong A's fan, lives up in the Bay Area. So these are the videos courtesy of Julian. Good job out there. We know that you guys have been strong and vehement in your support of the Oakland A's. I feel for you. I never make fun of whatever crowds are there. That's not fair to do. You guys are in a tough, tough situation. So Julian, thanks for giving us this. And A's, way to support... I know it's touchy because you want to support the players. You don't want to support ownership financially, but you want to be there for the players out there. So I know it's tough. And by the way, Shane Bieber shoved. He absolutely shoved. Good for you. Good for you and good for voter. Yeah. Who are you, who are you trying to wave in? What do you got? Uh, well, the girls have come up. They're getting some lunch ready, I believe. Olivia's here. Oh. Kelly's here. Uh, we're all donning um, American flag bathing suits today. So I'm trying to get them oh, to come boy. over and say hi, and they're not really doing it. Here's Kelly. Oh, hi, Kelly. Hello. Oh, that's lovely. There we go. That's that's outstanding. Is she doing her podcast in the off season or no? Yeah, she's doing it. Yeah. Okay. I don't think she's done one here, but she's that's check that out. It's a really good one. The yeah. morning after with Kelly Stafford. Where's uh where's Matthew? Uh I think still down on the beach. Oh my god. Yeah. The tough life of an NFL Super Bowl winning quarterback. I don't know how I don't know how he does it. All right, it is time right now for our factor question of the week. And for that, we greatly appreciate everybody sending in their contributions. Once again, head on over to factormeals.com slash baseball fifty. Use that code baseball fifty. You're going to get half off your factor meals, which is oh so important to feed your belly. Alex, good job. I like this one. What rule change would you put in there to improve the game? Controversial or a no brainer one? I'm going to give you like four off the top of my head, then get to my real one. Okay. I don't think you should be able to wear an elbow guard unless you throw with that hand that leads your lead elbow. I don't like the big elbow guards. Guys get too comfortable around the plate. I know that goes against hitters. Don't think you should be able to do that. There's something about the infield fly rule that I don't like either, so I like might just want to get rid of that. Um, I think I had another one, but here's my main one. And I kind of made this up on the fly, so I don't know if it totally makes sense, but I want um, like a bonus ball, a bonus at bat, okay, where uh, if a team is, is down by enough runs, you can pick one at bat, right? Any – any way you get on base like a walk you can't just like walk a guy if you get on base it counts for a run okay if you hit a homer it counts for three runs if you get out it counts for two outs like i think we should make the game a little bit more interesting like that like a bonus ball similar to the way they do it in the three-point contest they get the bonus ball like we should do that in baseball it's so boring at the end of games when teams are down five six runs you're like oh what's gonna happen hey here's my bonus at bat let me go up there swinging. If you walk me on purpose, there's a run. If I pump you, there's three runs. I just think there's something there. I know the baseball traditionalists are going to hate that one, but it's my world, people. Let me let me tell you what I think. Dude, I am on board with that because I had something similar. Okay. Uh, mine was going to be that at any point in the game, you can pick where you want to have the lineup hit. So if you're down... Uh, yes. If you're down two runs in the ninth and it's seven, eight, nine that's scheduled to hit, but you want to hit the fast forward button and instead have like two, three, four lead off the inning, then I'd be good with that. We, I think we've talked about this before. It's like other sports, like at the end of the game, the, the ball is in the hand of the best players, right? Yep. We don't have that in baseball. So I agree with you. Like if it's a ninth inning, you're down X amount of runs, uh, and, uh, 
you can start the lineup at the top or two, three, four, whatever you want. I think that would be awesome. And you'd put a little bit more pressure on these closers. Like that would be fun to see because you're getting, you know, arguably the team's best pitcher, the guy closing out the game, the guy with the best right. stuff on the team going up against the best hitters. I mean, what's not to like about that? Well, apparently our chat has a lot to not like about it. Not only were they calling you the worst commissioner, then they were like, <laughs> boy, Chris, you're just as dumb as Trevor, all sorts of stuff. But think it, That's just stop right. and think about it for a second. Just stop and think about it. It'd be pretty good, right? I mean, I, I had never thought of like your bonus ball. Um, idea. We're an entertainment product. Let's entertain the fans. We don't have to yeah. always be baseball traditionalists. Like I respect that you for the most part, but like we can make some changes. We and guess what, guys? We're gonna have to eventually to get people interested in this game. I know well, we that, talk about it all the time. I don't know we need to go that far, but let me have my let me let me talk a little bit. All right, don't it's okay. I love it. I, I'm I'm on board. You know what? We can start it. We can we can kind of handcraft this idea over over drinks one day. I mean, that's boy. If we add drinks to this equation, who knows what that shit's going to look like in the ninth inning? Look at our look at our blitz ball games. Maybe we should do it there. It could be a, just a testing ground for new MLB rules. Yeah. Could you imagine if you had to use multiple pitchers in the ninth inning, and one of them had to be a position player, like the equivalent of having Joe's throw in the ninth? No, I don't like that one. I'm out on that one. But here, here, hear me out real quick before we before we go. The Savannah Bananas just sold out Minute Maid Park in Houston, and they do a bunch of silly stuff. People want to be entertained. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the Harlem Globetrotters effect, right? But the question is, would you want to watch the Harlem Globetrotters play 82 times a year for your hometown team, or is it a novelty? That's it's my novelty, personal opinion, right? it's a novelty. I don't think what we're talking about would turn the game into that. I'm saying that's one one chance, and you have to be down a certain amount of runs. Like it's it'd be awesome. Hey, Whatever, let's chat. It yeah, it's it's kind of freaky, but I dig it. I, I want to think about it. I'm gonna go Just back to my Modelo now. Viewers, I think. Look, look at this. Okay. Well, whatever. Um, everybody enjoy your first weekend of the regular season it's going to be awesome we are back at it again on monday we cannot wait five days a week you guys have really been pumping the numbers as far as the live shows go so thank you for doing that and don't forget if you're in the los angeles area two weeks from today we'll be doing our first ever live edition of baseball today at boomtown brewery so go click the link in the description go get your general admission seats we'll see you at five o'clock local time for our one-of-a-kind producer dan rourke and the uber talented Trevor Plouffe, who are you wearing your American flag? I am. You want to see? Yeah. Oh. Oh, look at that. That's that's outstanding modeling. I was going to go shirtless for the Rose. show, but I wasn't sure how that would go over. I don't know. You could have. You could. You know what? If you, oh yes. What the heck? Could have done this the whole show. Let's go see Rosie there. That's what I'm talking about. That's, That's what I'm talking guy. about. That's what we got to do this every show. <laughs> I am the half-shirted Chris Rose. We will see you Monday here on Baseball Today, presented to you by Factor.